I'm gonna make a quick follow-up video because I wanna talk about these Apple AirTags again. I got something wrong. I got a lot right, but I got something wrong, but also I had so many comments that were also kind of hit and miss. I found out a little bit more because what I did was I contacted Apple and I have pages upon pages upon pages of documentation about the AirTag. And I found out quite a bit and as I mentioned, some of it I was wrong on, so I want to clarify in this video. Let me tell you what I did, the setup for all this. I took a brand new AirTag, I set this up, and I named it Bike, uh, Kevin's Bike Theft Test or something like that. And I took that AirTag and I put it in our faux bike here, which is represented by this witch on a broom. By the way, if you come to Kev Central's household on Halloween, you get, the, you get candy in these nice little burlap bags. But I had this, I set it outside, so a perfect mimic that it was a bike. It was kept in the same location. And then I had someone come by and take this. Took this bag and they rode off with it. They rode off with it on electric XP 2.0 with the trailer with their kid on the back. And they set off and they didn't even go straight home. Because what I had mentioned, what I was wrong about in my video, I said that someone could take this and that the second they got it back, because Apple had limited the device, the second they got it back to their house, that it would turn off my ability to see and it would notify them. So I was right on half of that. They left, they went a mile away from here and stopped at a park, let their kid play on the playground. I never got notified when the bike left my premises and this had sat outside in the same spot, just like it was the bike. My phone was even inside when they came to get it. I made sure it didn't get beside the bike. So I never got a notification, and that has happened before with this on my keys and with my wallet. I have an AirTag on my wallet, and I've been places and left the keys, left the AirTag, they've slid in a cushion, whatever. Sometimes I get notified almost immediately. As soon as I start going away, it's you're no longer in proximity to your wallet or your keys, and sometimes I never get a notification. Well, that happened on this. The bike, in essence, what's supposed to be my bike, left my premises, and this never let me know. They got a mile away, stopped at that park, spent some time at that park. They're messaging me on Facebook Messenger the entire time. Let me know when they get somewhere, when they leave somewhere. It wasn't until they left that I got notified that this had been gone. Six to eight minutes is how long they actually stayed at that park before I was notified, or excuse me, and when they left that park, it was six to eight minutes before I was notified that they had been at the park. They go to a second location, get to that second location and spend some time. And it wasn't, I never saw there. They were still at, according to me, they were at the old park. So if I would have found out my bike was gone and, oh, it's at this location and drove there, they wouldn't have been there. They would have already been gone. They left the second location. It wasn't until sometime after that that I showed that they had been there. They get back to their house, and this is where it gets really interesting. Because they said almost immediately upon getting back to their house, they received a notification on their phone, a tracking notification, even sent me screenshots. But this is what they received. When he clicked on it, it opened up this window that not only told them the exact time that they left with the bike, they left my premises, so that's good for anti-stalking. It would you could kind of try, oh, well, I was at this location at that time, so that's where I picked this up. But as far as my bike, it let them know the exact time that they left and that they were back at their house. It allowed them to play the tone to be able to find this. If they didn't know where it was, they would be able to find it. So instantly, he started thinking like a thief. He put his phone into airplane mode. Never did I get notified. At one point, it updated location from the last little park place that they stopped at kind of in the middle between there and their house it pinged off something because it notified me of a street address there which was not his so i don't know where he is he's put his phone into airplane mode so it's quit updating at all so in essence if he were a thief he would have been safe at that point now later he did turn back on his phone out of airplane mode and almost instantly, I was able to see his exact address. So I was wrong in that. I said that it would never let me know. It did let me know the exact address, but kind of on his terms. So if he would have been a thief, there would have been no way 
I could have timely tracked him to actually find the bike and he would be in full control to be able to turn it off. So see, I got some right, I got some wrong. And I've had people say that 10 minutes they were notified and I talked with someone else that kind of duplicated the exact same experiment. And theirs was about the same time frame, about 40 to 45 minutes. And it wasn't until they got home and it almost instantly alerted them. So I wanted to clarify that part of it. Now, let me throw one other thing in here, actually two other things. Number one, I wanna tell people, I, I was a little upset when I made the last video, so I may have came across as being maybe anti-Apple, and I knew the second I was gonna talk about an Apple device. I mean, there's Apple zealots out there. I'm an active Apple user, have been for the longest. I mean, this is my MacBook Pro, these are my AirPods, my Apple Watch. I've got Mac minis. I'm an app, AirTags obviously. I am an Apple user, I have been an Apple user, but I don't like this M1 Pro MacBook that I bought brand new last year. It's the worst editing machine I've ever had. Not sold and it was the latest model until about two weeks ago when they released the M2s. But I, maybe that kind of came across and maybe sound anti-Apple. I wasn't, and I'm not, anti-Apple. I just expect better from Apple. And the anti-stalking side, I'm all about protecting people. I don't want anyone bad, you know, any nefarious stuff to happen to anyone. And I admit, these could be easily used to drop in and track someone. My problem with that, with the whole setup, is the way that they did this and neutered a product that had so much more potential. And I'm going to make an argument and I know people, someone's probably already commented on this video, they did on the others, but, you know, this wasn't, it's not for tracking lost or stolen, it's not for tracking stolen items, it's for tracking lost items. Well, as I said in my last video, stolen is just a form of loss. That's just a forced loss. And also, I can make the argument, when you're setting this up, you come across, it's a very easy setup process, by the way, totally Apple, and that's why I like Apple. There, it's Apple detail when you're, you pull a tab out and get some screen prompts. It's so easy to set these up. That's 100% Apple. That's what I expect and for it to work. What I don't like and where I think that implied ability for being a security or tracking device for lost items come in is when you name it. You can choose to choose a custom name like I did with this Kevin's bike theft test thing or there's other stuff. Obviously, wallet, that would be a common thing for an AirTag. Keys, that would be a common thing for an AirTag. But when you get up and you see bike. Now, bike's not, you know, that's not keys. That's not a small item that you're going to easily lose. You can misplace your wallet, you misplace your keys. Misplacing your bike, well, that's a different argument. And the fact that we know that a lot of people use these for bike security, there are countless products. You know, I use one of them the little bottle mount hider, a bottle mount hider. I mean, there are things that covertly hide it in a stem cap and a backlight and a tail light and all kinds of stuff. Very ingenious. Apple knows those are out there. It's been kind of an implied thing. A lot of people did it before they did the anti-stalking updates to start neutering these. So when I go in and I see that you can name it as being on a bike, what this is used on is on a bike, you know, that starts getting a little waffly on the argument of they don't, they don't know that people are using these for security devices or they're not to be used for security devices when it's right there, your bike. Because like I said, it, at least in the United States, now I know some countries, you know, you might have Holland or something, might be a bit different, but in the United States, you know, cyclists, their bike racks are usually a couple of them and they're up next to a building you're just not going to lose your bike. You're going to know where you parked it. At the very least, you wouldn't be able to use the audio chirp or anything like that. You would still come up to the bike rack, even if you use this just for location finding of the bike. You'd still have to pick it out among the bike rack. But what most people we know use these for is for someone to have it on their bike. And if their bike leaves that rack, they know that it's left that rack and they're able to track and find the bike. So that's my case and I think that that's pretty valid. And I don't dislike the product. I just think Apple could have done better with their implementation of anti-stalking features. So I approached when I contacted Apple 
and got escalated and got all this stuff. I asked the person that gave this to me, I said, well, why couldn't they have just done a toggle? And I went through my whole, I've thought this out, and I came up with a whole system that they could have implemented that I thought would have been better and put the power back in the user's hands, but also protected people. They actually liked my idea and gave me somewhere that I should submit it, so I submitted it to Apple. Haven't heard anything. Haven't heard anything, but I submitted an idea that I think would bring back the ability to use this for at least better bike tracking and get back some more functionality while still protecting people. So we'll see. That's my story tonight. I just wanted to correct a wrong. I don't like to be wrong, but I will admit when I am, and I was half wrong, I want to get it right, get proper information. And before I leave, I want to mention one other thing. When I found out that iPhones would get notified, my first thought was, well, what about Android users? It turns out Apple also takes care of Android users, which is kind of cool. They have an app that you can install on an iPhone and scan to track and see if there is an AirTag in your proximity. And from what I understand, that was the only time that I ever saw in all of this documentation any timing. It's usually it just mentions overnight. It's really vague wording. But on the Android app, there was a mention of 10 minutes. So what I took from this is that you could set it to actively scan and within it would update every 10 minutes or something like that. Or you could just scan right there on the spot, which, you know, if you're a bike thief, maybe you want to use Android instead of iOS or an iPhone because you can scan instantly and see if there's something on that. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Bike thievery, it's not good. And being a thief is just being a horrible human being. So don't do that. But that's my talk my clarification, my update, and what I got wrong because I want to be as right as I always can here at Kev Central. Thank you for watching and have a great day.